good evening. It's good to see everybody here tonight. I, fin I didn't finish my story this morning about the sermon that the preacher was going to get out of what I was saying. It, it was on humility. When I went off to school, I was full of myself, and my English teacher was an Englishman, and I wasn't no foreigner going to teach me how to write English, but he did. He didn't. My wife did after about 20 years of living with a school teacher, but... Uh, Humility. Man needs to humble himself occasionally to be able to learn. So uh, I'll ask Justin if he would to open us in prayer tonight. Everybody like to sing the choir, come on up, we're going to sing out of the inspiration.
Thank you, choir, for that good singing. I'd like to thank those that stepped out this morning and filled in singing. Really enjoyed that. Good service this morning. Look forward to one tonight. Amen. I'll turn it over to you, Brother Kerry. Amen. It's good to be back in God's house tonight. It's good to see each one come out to be with us. Before we go any farther, I thought we would have the altar prayer tonight. We've started doing that on Wednesday night. So has anybody got special requests you'd like to make mention of? Okay. None of that. Anybody else? Unspoken. Any other unspoken requests? Spoken request. Amen. Amen. None of that. Amen. None of that. Bible school and everybody be getting ready to help. I'll tell you about that. Any other requests? I was just telling them back in the prior room, I've got a friend up in North Carolina. He's headed down to Atlanta to get some more tests run tomorrow. And I'm sure him and his family would appreciate our prayers. And then also a fellow up in Kentucky that I know is uh, waiting some results this week and he needs our prayers also and more importantly he needs the Lord so remember that situation if you would any other requests No other requests. Let's pray for the service tonight. Everybody that can and will come and join us in the altar. And I'll ask Brian if he'll take us to the Lord in prayer. Amen. If you got your Bibles and want to turn with me over to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, and we'll read a few verses beginning in verse 31. 
And then also, I'd like to go back to John, uh, kind of where I left off this morning. And that I kind of had this in mind for the service tonight, this word, but, but it kind of ties right back into this morning. Um, if you remember, maybe and you, some wasn't here this morning, but the thought was being doers of the word and not hearers only. So that would be applying to this message tonight also that we be doers of the word and not hearers only. Uh, Jesus said, I read this this morning, and I'm going to add another verse or two here, but I'm going to start in John, then we'll go to Matthew 25. But Jesus told them there, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, Verse 15 out of uh, chapter 14 in the Gospel of John. Then down in 21, he said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So we keep God's commandments. That's how we uh, show that we love Him when when we keep His commandments. But jump over with me to chapter 15, uh, verse 12. He said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So we keep God's commandments. We do what God tells us to do. We do try to do what God tells us not to do. Try not to do that, those things. But But a command that He's give us every one is that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he goes on, verse 13, and he scribes how he loves us. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh, No greater love than that a man would lay down his life for his friends. We automatically think, well, that's what Jesus did for us. Jesus laid down his life for us. He And he did, and we're thankful for that. He gave his life so that we could have life, and we're thankful for that. But did you know we can lay down our life for those that we love also? We can lay down our lives uh, for others, for our friends. We can do that. You say, how do we do that? Whenever somebody's in need and we can do something to help them, we lay down whatever we're doing, whatever it may be on our plate, we lay that down to go be of a help to somebody else. That's what we do. He says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And then he goes on, he says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So I've thought about that a lot of times. You know, we lay down our life to go and be of a help to somebody else. Does that that make sense to you? Uh, If somebody is in need, we go and try to help them and, and do what we can for them. He tells us to do that. Uh, Like I say, obviously, probably there's a good chance none of us will have to actually take a bullet for somebody. I'm sure that's possible, uh, but but we're not thinking about it in that sense. We're thinking about it as in the sense of laying down what we're doing to go be a help and a blessing to somebody else. I believe we can all do that. Probably all have. Probably all all ought to do that a lot more is to, to lay down what we've got, lay down our business to be a help to somebody else lay down our life for somebody else. I, I want to read over here in Matthew chapter 25. Again, this is uh, talking in, in, uh, in about being doers and not just hearers. And I'll, I'll read verse 20, 25, uh, or chapter 25 starting in verse 31. But I'll say this, I know we're not saved by works. We say that so many times. I want to make that perfectly clear. We're not saved by works, but being saved and the love of God in our heart will produce good works. That's just the way it is. If being saved and having the love of God in our heart will produce good works. Being saved and letting God have His way in our heart and life will make us want to lay down our life to go and be of a help to somebody else. Whatever may be our job or whatever is important to us or whatever, well, so-and-so is in need, I'm going to go be of a help to them. I'm going to go see them. I'm going to take time out of my day call them, I'm going to do this or that, and if you're like me, I could do a whole lot more. I could do a whole lot more of laying down my life to be of a help to somebody else. That's just the way it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully every one of us will grow and, and do this and, and take this word tonight and be a doer and not just a hearer. But I, I, that's where we're going is, uh, is, like I say, we're not saved by works, but when we do get saved, we do have God in our hearts, there'll be works come out. Uh, Look, read with me right here. Jesus said, and this is the way it's going to be. Now, over in Matthew chapter 25, when the Son of Man, verse uh, 31, when the Son of Man shall come in His glory, 
and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? Listen to what he says right here. For, verse 35, For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Let's stop right there just for a minute. Uh, remember what I said a while ago there about laying down our life? Somebody uh, that's going to wind up there, and he's going to say, Welcome in, because they laid down their life at some point and fed somebody that was hungry, okay? Uh, gave somebody drink that was thirsty, uh, uh, took up a stranger, took a stranger in, um, uh, uh, clothed somebody that was naked, uh, visited somebody that was sick, uh, went and helped somebody that was in prison. Somebody laid down their life uh, uh, for somebody, and, and right there it's going to be rewarded in the end. He's going to say, come on in, good faithful servant. And then the righteous, and the righteous here, who's he talking about the righteous? And the righteous here are those who have been saved and have put on the righteousness of Christ. You know, there ain't, there ain't no righteousness in me and no righteousness in you. But when we get saved, we put on the righteousness of Christ. The God comes into our heart. That love of God is in our heart. The righteous, that's who he's talking about, is those that are saved. So I ought to be doing what he says right here if I claim to be saved. Then shall the righteous answer him, say, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered? You know, he said, you fed me when I was hungry. You gave me drink when I was thirsty. You uh, took me in when I was a stranger, clothed me when I was naked, uh, visited me when I was in the prison. He said, then they'll say, and we might say, then the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? You know, when did we see you as a, stra a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, now listen right here, folks. Listen to this right here. The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you've done it unto me. We go, we go and visit somebody. We go and, and, and see somebody that's sick. We go and give somebody food uh, that's, that's hungry, whatever we do. He said, whatever you do, you're doing it just like it was to me. And he's keeping record. God's keeping record. But then shall he say, and this is where we need to again think, I need to be a doer and not just a hearer. Because here they some going to hear these words, verse 41. Then shall... Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And again, uh, we don't do works so that we can be saved. You can't be saved by doing works. But when you truly get saved and the love of God is in your heart, we ought to be a wanting to do some works. We ought to be a wanting to love the brethren. That's what he said over there in John chapter 15. You, that you love them, that you lay down your life. Uh, for your friends. He said, Then shall though going to say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, 
Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not unto one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. You know, it makes me want to think, it wants me, makes me want to think and do more. I don't know about you, but if the love of God's in our heart, we ought to be taking every opportunity we've got to do something for somebody and be a help to somebody. I was uh, thought about this. I, I spoke on this a long time ago. I believe maybe way back in the old sanctuary years ago. But I, but I thought about this then, and I can remember I, I, these, these fellas was a blessing to me. I'm just going to tell you they was. They was a couple deacons. Uh, and you say, well, I could just name a lot of things that is examples that I could share with you. But, but I remember a long time ago, and this was way before I ever uh, uh, was, was called a preach or anything like that. But I can remember, uh, and this is just tells you what, uh, doing just a little bitty something for somebody will mean to them. But I can remember being right back there right where the water fountain is. Brian will correct me if I'm wrong. But just right over by the steps, there was a little Sunday school room there, I believe, on the bottom floor. It was before the top even was put on back there. And we was back there one Sunday morning, and I remember uh, back before everybody had a phone in their pocket, and I think my mama called and got a hold of a lady out the road here and told them that my pa was real bad. Pa, he took a bad turn. He's up in the hospital at Asheville. And... A lady who lived out the road out here, she come out here and found the church and found somebody, and they found me in that Sunday school room. And I remember leaving. I don't know if Roxy remembers it or not. But we left, and we went to Asheville, and Paul, he was up there in a bad shape, in the, like in the ICU of the heart center there. And I remember sitting there that evening, and there was two deacons from the church come and drove all the way up there to Asheville. And I thought, boy, that was a blessing to me. See them fellers walk in. Neither one of them's here tonight. One of them's not even here at the church anymore. But I thought, boy, what a blessing that was. That meant so much to me. But you know what them fellas did? They laid down their life on Sunday afternoon. They could have took a nap. They could have went and did whatever. But they decided to drive up there, and they just showed up, and it just blessed my heart good. And I thought, you know, just a little old bitty something right there, that right there. And that's been a lot of years ago. I remember it just like it was this afternoon, okay? Just a little bit of something you can do. Lay down your life for the brethren, okay? Do something for somebody. And I, I've, I've always wanted to try to do what I could, and you say, you could do a whole lot more? Amen. I could do a whole lot more. I think we probably all could do a lot more, but we need to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. And we need to remember uh, that, that uh, you know, whatever it is we do, uh, whatever it is we can do is going to be a blessing. It's going to be a help to somebody, and, and we need to be about doing it. And we need to do it while it's on our heart, okay? We need to do it. I said this morning, and I'll say it again. Uh, while we've still got time, we need to do what we can. Uh, when it's in our power to do something, do it. This has been on my heart about all the last part of this week. There's a little old lady up there at the church that I come from. And she never was able to come to church a whole lot while I was there. But uh, she'd be there every now and again. And, and she had her ways. And, and uh, she, was, she was a bird. I'll just put it that way. She was going to, she's 98 years old. And she was going to be 99 real soon. So anyway, I told Roxy after we left the church, she hadn't been to the church in a long time. And I told her we need to get run back up there and see her. She's going to be 99 in April. And I said, we need to run her back up there. And here's what we'll do, folks, and don't be like me, all right? So last Sunday afternoon, I told Roxy, I said, we'll run up there and see her before church, last Sunday afternoon. Then I got sitting, here's what we'll do. I got sitting down in that chair right there, and it was raining last Sunday afternoon, y'all know it. It was warm there in the house, and I said, i tell you what, we'll just go see her next Saturday afternoon. That's what we'll do. We're going to go with the kids up there to that thing Saturday, up there to Highlands Outpost, and and we're going to do that, and then we'll run down there and see her then. We'll go down to her house then. She ain't at her house now. They called me Thursday and said they took her to the hospital. She's failed, and and I don't, I just tell you, put her on your prior list. I don't know how she's going to do. Uh, but anyhow, I said, boom, opportunity missed. I could have went and seen her at her house. And, 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 and at her house, 
Uh, she's 98, pushing 99 years old, but sharp as a tack. But now she's been in the hospital two or three days and on medications and things like that. And and uh, we did get to, we went and seen her. I said, well, we went and seen her, but it wasn't like going to see her at her house, and she would have known everything. Same like she noticed when we first got there, and then uh, as the visit went on our Friday evening, she didn't hardly know as much, but I thought, should have went last Sunday. Should have went last Sunday. Should have went and visited her last Sunday, because I don't know that she'll go back home. I don't know that she'll go back home. I don't know that she'll get out of the hospital. You know, 99, that's a pushing it, uh, right at 99. I don't know that she'll get out of the hospital. But I thought, you know, when it's in our power to do something, we need to do it. Okay? When we've got opportunity to do something, we need to do it. When it's in our power. And don't say wait till next week. Don't say wait till tomorrow. Let me tell you, don't count on having tomorrow to do the work, whatever it is God may put on our heart. Let me give you a verse, and if you didn't have this in Mark, because this, this come to me, Proverbs 27 and verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. That's just the way it is. I should have went on when I had that on my heart instead of putting it off. And you know, I thought, that's the way we'll do a lot of times when we could lay down our life to go do something for God, to go be a blessing and a help to somebody else. We'll just, you know, kind of like we do with God a lot of times, we'll wait till a more convenient time, right? We'll wait till we ain't, ain't busy or we ain't doing this or we ain't doing that. Well, that time may not come. Or that person that we need to go help may not be there when that time rolls around. Or we may not be able to go help them when that time rolls around. So I would tell you, and that would be my suggestion tonight for every one of us, is when it's in our power to do something, to go ahead and do it then, okay? Go ahead and, and do whatever it is. And our work, could be a number of things. And I just wrote down a few things on my list here that might be on your heart to do for somebody. And, and like I say, it could be a number of things, but, but preparing a meal for somebody, maybe it's been going through a hard time or whatever. You know, that'd be a good thing to do. I'm not much at preparing no meal for sure, but there's some of you that there are. And if God puts that on your heart, that's laying down your life for somebody that you love, and you ought to do that. You ought to do that. Uh, you ought to go ahead and do that. Picking up the phone here, this is not a real hard thing to do. Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of folks, but, but picking up the phone and giving somebody a call, it's handy to know that somebody cares about you. It's handy to know that somebody may be praying for you. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Go to witness to somebody and tell them of God's love. That's something they don't need to put off. When that's the only heart I can remember several years ago, thought about this uh, when I was, Ed had a friend right there. He said, I want you and Madison to go with me to see this fella. And we went and seen that fella, and the guy prayed and got saved. Might not have needed to put it off no longer. We needed to go right then. You know, that may be the case. If somebody's on your heart to go witness to him or talk to him, just go ahead and do it. And I'll tell you this, too, about that deal right there. You say, well, I don't know. I just don't. If God puts it on your heart, he's done already working on their heart. Okay? It'll be ready when you get there, all right? Don't, uh, and the devil, he'll say, boy, they ain't going to want to hear it. They're not going to have it. They're going to think different about you from then on. Them are all lies of the devil, okay? I've seen that happen. I've experienced that. If he puts it on your heart, don't put it off. Go ahead. Because like I say, you know, the next week may not come. And some of us will be glad to go with you. But taking somebody a load of firewood, simple a thing as that, taking somebody a load of firewood, you know, that's something we could do. If there's a need, uh, and I've seen that happen a lot of times. I, I've uh, thought about this a long time and had a message like this on my heart for a long time. And, and over the years, I've seen people do stuff like that. You know, that's just laying down your life to go be a blessing and help somebody else. And, and uh, just something like that. Anybody, any of us can do that just about, you know, go, to go and, and help and then do a project on somebody's house. Seems like we used to do that a lot. Go build them around for a go. Uh, uh, straighten up around their house or go put a roof on the house or whatever. You know, that's the kind of things. When we do that to somebody, we're doing that to God. So if God puts that on our heart, well, well, let's just do that. You know, go visit somebody 
uh, you know, go to somebody's home and visit them. That's a good thing. Uh, taking your time to go and be a, a blessing and help. You know, here's what we need to do, folks, and this is just the way of, first of all, we don't need to procrastinate. We don't need to put it off. Because like I say, tomorrow or next week may not come. Here's what we need to do, though. We just need to be willing and available. That's what we need to be doing, is be willing and available to be used. And I'm satisfied if we'll just, a lot of times we're just focused on our life, and that's all it is, and me, myself, and I, and we're going wide open. But we need to just look around, and if there's something around that we can do or be of a help to somebody or show them love, we just need to do that. We need to be willing. We need to be available to be used by God. And, you know, that's what he says we ought to be doing. And, and uh, again, tonight, we need to be hearers and doers, not just hearers. So here tonight, I don't know your heart. I'm going to ask you to stand. Maybe ask for not to come play a verse of some song. If he spoke to you for any reason, though, folks, every one of us can be a doing something. And I'm satisfied every one of us can be doing more. Uh, it's starting here. Starting right here should be a doing more. You know, so if he's uh, laid it on your heart to, to do something, maybe call somebody, visit something, go be a blessing, go help somebody, uh, that's God. He's wanting you to do that. It's just like you're doing it to him. Not saying that we do anything for a reward. Not not at all. But we, but we do these things as unto the Lord because that's the way it is. And it's just being used by Him. If He spoke to you for any reason, you want to come and, and talk to Him here tonight, maybe make yourself that willing and available vessel, uh, then you ought to just do it right now. Don't wait till next week. Step out right now. Say, Lord, here I am. I'm ready to do whatever it is you put on my heart. I'm going to ask you to step out if you've got a need. If she sings here. Use us, Jesus. Lord, here we are. Ready to serve you. Fill us this hour. You It's you, Lord, we cherish, we are servants to be, so use us any way you please. You know, as these are praying, I'm satisfied he spoke to more hearts than this tonight. And I'm satisfied there's plenty, every one of us can be a doing. I'm going to ask you to step out and bring it to God. If he showed you anything that you could do more for him or be a better service or maybe just be more aware of what's going on around us and be available. So if he spoke to you for any reason, I'm going to step, ask you to step out right now and come and be a part of this prayer as we go to the Lord with these.
Everybody, if you got anything you'd like to share with us tonight or make mention of or thank God for? Appreciate all Jenny and this group do with the shut in ministry, and they need some help. And I'm sure there's a, a lot that can be, if you're willing and you make yourself available, there'll be a lot of help we got already here if you'll just step out and be of a help there. Also, needing help with the Wednesday night youth activities up there, the challenge. So it's a growing, we need more help with that. And also going to need a lot of help with Bible school coming up real soon. So uh, there's plenty to do. And you know when we do it, we're doing it as unto the Lord. That's what he said. So remember all that. And if there's something we can do, you know, it's an opportunity that we can serve God and do something for him. Uh, there's a lot, plenty of stuff we do that don't amount to nothing. But when we can do something for God, that's going to amount to something. So any opportunities, let's just be available. Anything else needs to be said or thank God for? Yes. Let the church be the excuse for all the other things we're not doing. That'd be a whole lot better than the other way around, right? Yeah. That's good. Anybody else? Well, I appreciate you being here tonight. It's a good crowd. Thank God for you. I can't think of a better place to be on Sunday night. And I'm glad to be here and glad you're here. And thank God for you. Uh, remember the service come Wednesday evening. Come back and be with us if you can. And let's try to remember these prior requests. Everything that's been mentioned tonight and all these that are sick and, and got uh, tests and procedures and things this week, remember all that. Nothing else, though, to be said. I'm going to ask Justin if he dismisses in Christ.